Okay, so let's kick off then. If you would like to give yourself a quick little introduction uh, for the people who are watching on the channel. Okay, uh, hello everyone on uh, Dan <laughs> Runs' channel. I'm James and I've got a YouTube channel which is James Cruise 08. That's what I called it when I first set, uh, set it up years ago for uh, different purposes. And uh, yeah, I've just carried on using that channel really. Um, I don't use Instagram, I've, I use Facebook, but I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but I've, um, I'm from a musical background and uh, my Facebook was used mostly for promotion of that. So I haven't really sort of mixed the running with, with that. And uh, yeah, so my personal account is more running related and the YouTube channel now is pretty much 100% running related. So that's where you can find me really. But YouTube yeah. is, the, is the main place. And you've been uploading uh, running videos on that YouTube channel for just over two years, I think. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's about right, yeah. Yeah, I have been. Yeah, I think you've been going uh, just a little bit longer than me. Um, I was dipping into your videos earlier because I, I recall actually, I commented on your Brighton Marathon video and I watched your video soon after I completed the Brighton Marathon, which we'll talk about later. Um, because at the time, there weren't that many videos out there for the Brighton Marathon anyway. So I remember looking sort of in the week afterwards thinking, I wonder if anybody else documented the day. And sure enough, your video was there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you kind of highlighted what your weekend was like. Um, and you did a few interviews as well on the day, kind of just uh, a bit more work at the kind of uh, what's the word the expo uh, which was a pretty windy day wasn't it down at Brighton yeah it was we went down for the whole weekend because uh, as you know you have to go and mess around picking up your bib and your race packet and being from the Midlands Brighton is a fair old uh, fair old trek for my brother and me and uh, we got accommodation went down for the weekend and yes the wind was uh, it hit us right in the face on the uh, I think we got down yeah the Friday we got down and uh, the Saturday and the Sunday weren't much better. But uh, weather aside, well, I'd say we'll talk about Brighton later, but weather aside, uh, it, was, it was a good one for me, that one. Yeah, I mean, in terms of your, your running, you've done so many more events than I've done. You've actually done a significant number of park runs as well. I think I'm at two or three. But what's your park run number? Right. Again, there's, there's a story with park run because I've only just hit 100. And officially 100 but I've done about 115 something like that but um, I'm not going to bore you it depends how much time you've got I could bore you with the whole 100 story you, know, you uh, can carry on we've got all the time really? in the world yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can talk forever and uh, I don't want to bore everyone because but the, the, the story is on my channel anyway but I, I'll, I'll go back before then and uh, how I got into part run and how it all started but I used to be a fairly comp good runner as a kid before I discovered beer and uh, curries and going out and that sort of thing. And uh, I used to run for the county years ago when I was like a teenager. Well, before teenager, but really early years because I was a right scrawny little kid. I hated all the other sports, football, rugby, I hated that. And running was the only thing I was good at. And um, I did that for a number of years and was yeah, about a 42 minute 10 k in, in those days. But there was nothing to me, I was about five stone. And uh, I sort of packed that in in my teens and, you know, bad, <laughs> bad choices, student life and just getting on it all the time. And I got to my early 40s and I wasn't hugely overweight, but I wasn't in good shape at all. And I wanted to sort of put that right. And I enjoyed my food and uh, beer and everything. I thought, I've got to do something. And I thought, I heard a thing on the uh, on radio too about part run. Didn't know anything about it, and did a bit of digging and found out there was one just down the road from where I lived. And this was uh, this would have been June two thousand and sixteen, and I just literally turned up. Like yourself, I've heard your stories about your early running with the uh, the trainers that weren't suitable and just putting anything on and just getting out there and doing it. And I thought, I wonder if I can actually run for 5k without stopping i didn't care about time i didn't even know what a, a good time would be but i just thought let, let's go there and get it done and uh, i did it in about 32 minutes 40 seconds or something which at the time i was like i was overjoyed because i thought under 40 minutes would be a, a sort of goal but yeah i did that and then i did it the following week at cannon hill which is a big part run in birmingham and uh, got the time down to 31 minutes and then after that I stopped <laughs> I just uh, got into my bad habits again and then uh, 
about a year on, 2017, I, I really sorted my sort of diet out and joined the swimming world and uh, lost a fair bit of weight and got down to more or less where I wanted to be and uh, and then started the running again and gradually got to the uh, the goal of sub 30 minutes and that happened in October 2017 I I missed out the 29s and went straight to the 28s and I've just been chipping away ever since with uh, with getting those times down and um, yeah compared to others and, and you, you're pretty rapid on the 5k from what I've seen but my ultimate goal from was it last year was to go sub 25. That was uh, I, that was me pushing it as much as I could. I've done that a, a couple of times. I got it down to 24, 34 or something like that. Which um, yeah, I'm, I'm really thrilled with that. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm waffling on about other things now. But yeah, part run. That's where it started. And obviously, for me, I need discipline. I need a reason to do it, and uh, I need a goal and an. And being in a sort of, although part run isn't technically a race, you are, I'm racing myself and being amongst other people that are doing the same thing, I think that gives you a real sort of incentive and it's just all data and stats and just seeing an improvement, it really drives me. I, I Up until now, I couldn't just go out and run on my own because I just found it really boring and uh, just what, what's the point, you know, is there's no one to kick you at the backside you've got no sort of time goal you don't even know what you're doing for, for me it was I could never keep that up but to commit to something every week and stop me getting really hammered on a Friday night you know get, getting up and ready for nine to do the run it just sets the day perfectly for a weekend and if you've had a good a good part run there's nothing like it it's just like a buzz all weekend just from that 5k and uh, yeah so I just I committed to doing those every week and then I thought, I wonder if I can go a, a longer distance because, you know, you, you do the 5K for so long. You think, right, I wonder if I could do 10. And then I entered. Actually, no, there's an important point here. In 2017, I actually entered the Beachy Head Marathon without having done a 10K because that was the sort of, if I commit to doing that, it gives me something to work on. And I've got a year to sort of get myself ready for a marathon. So I entered the Beachhead Marathon literally the day after the 2017 one finished. I entered for the 2018 and I've not even done a 10K in my new running life. But uh, gradually I, I sort of worked up. I, I did um, a 10K in the November 2017. And just to get around and finish it, I think I did it in about one hour and uh, four minutes or something. But again, that, that, that was fairly, I, I found that fairly easy because I've been doing the 20 seven 28 minute part runs i felt that that was a really sort of easy pace but i just wanted to get around it and then thought right we can go for goals with a 10k later on and then i mean i'd, I'd done a half marathon as a kid sort of uh <laughs> illegally i sort of just like lied about my age <laughs> and uh entered the warsaw half marathon in about 1987 or something like that i can't remember the year but it's a long time ago i'm 46 now but yeah i thought i wanted to work up to those distances slowly again and um, yeah, I entered a few more 10Ks and then I did a 10 miler in the January of 2018, sort of 10 months prior to the Beachhead Marathon. And again, that was just get around, see if I can do it without stopping. One hour 44, I was happy with that. And then just the, the different distances, just trying to sort of better the times with, with each one and get to a standard for me, which you know I was happy with. And that gradually went down. And by the time Beachhead Marathon the, the, the date was on me I was sort of I felt confident that I could just get around I mean like yourself with the first marathon you do have a bit of an idea with time but just getting around getting it done and finishing that is the the number one goal and uh, yeah I successfully did that I did, I did a 20 mile the month before just to see if I could maintain sort of being on my feet for that long and uh, yeah that set me up uh, as well as it could really but that's another story again talking about how that went but uh, yeah I like to dive straight into things I, I need a reason and if, if I don't enter races then I can see myself stopping and um, that that goes back to the original question that's that's why everyone thinks I do that is my training the uh, the part runs and the races are actually my training I don't train that much in the week or I didn't. I'd do a session on a Tuesday night with um, with a running club that I'm a member of, and that varies from speed sessions just to like a, a 10k run. You know, every week it's different. Hill reps, long reps. You know, it, it's it's really varied. 
But usually, before all this lockdown nonsense, that's what I was doing. I was doing the, uh, the Tuesday night session. I might go out on my own on a Thursday, but just a, a 5K on my own, and then part run, and then a, a long run on the Sunday, which would be a race. And that's uh, it's, it's not the logical way of doing it, but it works for me, and I've stuck at it. And, yeah, that's uh, I think that answers your question. That's why my part run stats are higher, and uh, that's why I seem to be doing races all the time, because races are actually my training yeah and I, I think uh, when I listened to that story there the way I went about things was completely balmy really I I booked my marathon within about two weeks of deciding that I would become a runner if you like and um, yeah I needed a reason because at the time I couldn't really fathom how I would continue to progress and why I would want to go out by myself at the time it really was just training by myself so I needed that focus point in the future because at the end of the day, I spent my money. I'm going to be at the start line. Um, in fact, I didn't even tell anybody in my family I was doing it because I was a little bit nervous about whether I'd even get to that point. I thought if I dip out, no one will ever know. I yeah. can just bury it. I can just bury it. But um, yeah, it was kind of through that process of finding my feet, knowing there was a goal in mind, it kept me going out. Um, even those really kind of tough winters, those horrible days, I just thought, come on, I'm going to feel better on the day if I put my training in. And uh, even though I've only done a couple of park runs, I'd gone down to attempt uh, the park run once. And I felt like it was really useful for me because you get carried along with a crowd. And there are people there, all ages, shapes and sizes. And, you know, you can get passed by the 13-year-old girl, you get passed by the guy with the buggy and the five kids in it. Uh, yeah. But it does, it just gives you a little bit of race experience. It pulls you through and uh, it just kind of set me up for the marathon, even though I was walking into it completely blind i didn't have a clue what to expect and uh i mean it hit me pretty hard and i know we, we sort of mentioned brighton earlier that sunday when the wind from kind of 20 miles to the finish hit you it made it really hard work um, i mean a comment this morning on one of my videos and somebody sort of mentioned oh, i'm fancy doing the brighton marathon and i've said to everybody who's ever said it to me it is well worth doing, but bear in mind, there are hills. Uh, it, yeah, gets yeah. Bit, it gets a bit miserable from like 17, 18 miles onwards. You're pretty much on your own. The crowd disappears. You buy a power station and it is rough. So it's like mentality of wanting to finish is going to get you there. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard all these stories about the power station and the Brighton Marathon before, before I raced it. And... I was a little bit concerned about it and I almost sort of prepared myself for it, but I was totally different with Brighton. I, just, I got on with it really well. I don't know if it was luck or I, I just don't know, but I, I got my marathon PV there and it was my third marathon that was. And the, the two going back to Beachy Head, that was my first one. And the elevation is about four and a half thousand feet. It's crazy over the seven sisters on the uh, Eastbourne coastline. And it's just nuts. You don't do that for a time. And, I think I did that about six hours, 15 for my first marathon, which there was a lot of walking because the hills were just not even, well, they are for the, the, the super vast, but for people like me, you know, most of us are walking. So I did that. And then the second marathon I entered was the Portsmouth Coastal, which is flat, but it's really, really, it's really muddy and it had been raining all week and the, oh, you just lost your grip everywhere. And again, wind was a factor there. I think I did that in about five hours, 20 or something. So Brighton was my first real attempt at a road marathon, so to speak. So I was really trying to break the five hours for, the, uh, for, for that race. And I knew if I went off at sort of that pace for the first half, sort of two hours, 26 a night for the first half, that, that would be fairly fairly slow for me and relaxed and I stayed with the paces the five hour ones and I just felt great at the halfway point so I, I, I can imagine if you were going a bit more flat out for the first half those hills would play a bigger part but for me because I was going at a sort of comfortable a bit too comfortable probably pace it wasn't so much of a problem but the wind was a problem I would definitely agree with you on that getting to the power station and again I, I wasn't walking I was feeling as good as you can do at 20 miles and I was overtaking a lot of people who were struggling and that mentally that's that's really good and um but then I, that last bit when you hit the beach was just uh the pace did drop considerably but I almost knew I was going to make my time goal then and it was, it was it was just the best for me the best marathon I've ever had and 
I remember it with fond memories, really. But I mean, the, the, the worst was to come after that. My marathon uh, honeymoon soon, <laughs> it soon got the better of me after that. And uh, well, if you want to talk about those, we can do. But yeah, I've not had a good marathon since Brighton. But uh, yeah, for, Brighton for me was just the best and uh, yeah, the crowd and everything. But yeah, I think I'd almost made out the power station to be worse than it actually was for me. But I can imagine if I'd felt like I felt, I felt at Chester at that point, I would have just wanted to cry, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think also for me, the, the huge inexperience to do anything before that, I was walking into it. But uh, having done a few weekends down at Brighton, go down, play in the arcades. And I just thought, great, that's flat, <laughs> piece of cake. And that's sort of how I sold it to myself. So when I think I started to, you come out of, out of Brighton town, you kind of head left up towards the hills. Obviously, if you didn't beat your head and you, you did more races and more experience before that, I just started to run into it thinking this is, this is going to be difficult. And the other thing was I didn't really even understand what a pacer was. So I didn't actually set myself up very well at all. I finished it and it was fine. But on reflection, I, I really was very, very naive to how to approach a marathon in the right way. I was, well, I was winging it, basically. <laughs> winging yeah. it, ho- holding on. Uh, hoping for the best and yeah it was it was absolutely fine and I got to the end but uh, yeah thinking back to some of those moments I, I could have done it a whole lot better I could have approached it if I had been if you like a little bit more serious with the lead up to it instead of just ticking off you know the days of the week doing my running doing my training yeah. and then I'm on the start line just giving it a crack I, mean, I think you've been a bit harsh on yourself there, Dan, because I, I did watch your videos on the lead up to Brighton. And I remember you, you did a half, didn't you, before? You, you were doing quite long distances. I remember you doing a 20 miler and, and really like, doing well on that. Was that before Brighton you did? Yeah, you, you did I, half I did. You did a 20. I remember you doing a 20 and you seemed to breathe through that at yeah, a good pace I, as well. The, um, the two half marathons I did were at the beginning of March, so about six weeks out from Brighton um the local half marathon it was a Surrey half marathon and that was the first time I'd also attempted a 20 miler the trouble with that was it it ruined me because I wasn't really even aware what 20 miles was like other than the fact I was running home after the half marathon and I was doing that sort of slow plod um so yes I did do 20 miles but then I did the other half marathon back to back the following weekend yeah and so I think I left it a bit too late to work out the best approach. So when it came to Brighton, my experience of running a half was quite quick. So I ran that first half of Brighton like I was running a half marathon. Oh, right. And then only to kind of find, oh, wait, I've, I've got another half to go. Because I think I ran past, my parents found out I was doing a marathon. I kind of announced it to them with, with not too long to go. And I think I passed them halfway. I remember saying to my mum and dad, I said, oh, don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll be done in two hours. And that was about <laughs> like, because I'd gone through half marathon, like 150, 155. So I'll be done in two yeah. hours. I'll like, see you at the finish line. What other marathon? Recall, uh, was that a normal half? That? Bro, you did it uh, 150 the first half? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I went, I was like way too fast. And I, so I said to him, oh, yeah, right. I'll, I'll see you in two hours. We're wicked. No worries. And uh, then, of course, I looked down at watch and it started to get to four hours. And I thought, hang on. Um, you know, I've, the second half is really dragging now. Yeah. And, uh, but that was, again, I, I think if doing my training kind of again, I would have done a few more longer distances further back and then realized what I was doing with pace. I, I really was just aiming for like 530 per kilometer um, and yeah. just hoping to hold it. And that was all I knew. I didn't really appreciate that there is going to be a drop off 20 miles because I'd never gone further. Than 20 miles uh, that that makes sense then because i mean that i couldn't even dream of doing a half marathon in that time i mean mm. uh, to get into two hours the first time i did that that that, that was the for me the the ultimate ultimate goal so uh, i think 157 is my half pb and that's mm. like that's going flat out but i hadn't broken two hours at the half i think my p- pb was about 204 at the time for a half so my first half, I remember it when you hit the uh, the Grand Hotel at Brighton. I think the watch was saying two twenty six or something like that. So that I, I think that was right in terms of pacing. I mean, I think I set my watch for seven seven minute kilometer splits, but I wanted to go sort of lower than that. But I, I sort of kept around the six fifty 
six fifty fives for the first half, and then sort of uh, increase the pace on the second half. Which there's no right or wrong way of doing it. I think I don't, I don't know why it worked that day for me. I think I was just disciplined and and I, I had it. You know, I had enough energy because sometimes if you go off too slow, it can be it can be worse because it's the being on your feet for that long. I mean, that, you can't get rid of that, can you? All the training in the world doesn't really help with that that sort of achy pain that you get. Even when you're going at a relaxed pace, it's still hard being out on the road for that time, which I yeah. find... Yeah, that, that is true. And um, I think even for me, in terms of even using a watch, I, didn't, I just didn't know how to use it properly. I didn't know how to be effective with it. I had the gear and I... Been doing my training runs and enjoying it but i think on the day if i'd worked out a better method of tracking my speed i might have been able to settle into it more and i was thinking just a bit you know it's first nerve first time nerves isn't it so i got a little bit carried away with it but um i would do it again i would do bright marathon again and i think knowing now what's kind of ahead of me if i were to to sign up for it i could plan the whole run a lot better um, yeah. yeah, part part experience and part just knowing which sections would be hillier, which sections are flatter, when to you know give a little bit more, hold back a bit more, and just conserve the energy when you need to. And actually, I'd, I'd stick with a pacer. I'm I'm yet to do a race really uh, and stick with a pacer, which sounds a bit mad, but I just I think I've wrongly assumed I could just do it alone, when actually pacing the people that are doing it. And you've done a bit of pacing for a half marathon, haven't you? I have, yes, I've paced the half marathon. I've done a few unofficial partner paces, pacing for friends when they want a certain time that is within my capabilities. But yes, I have paced a uh, paced um, two fifteen at the uh, Nottingham Christmas half December last year. And uh, if if the truth be told, I did apply for the two thirty because again my PB one fifty seven flat out. I thought half an hour is it's a really comfortable you know i won't have any problems sort of getting in on that time but they could only fit me on the on the 215 and i was like well i'm confident but it's you know that's that's not me easy pace that's me sort of easy ish but it, it went really well and uh i was thinking it's about 214 50 or something so i've, I've timed that perfectly but um yeah pacing uh i don't usually run with pacers but I thought that was a Brighton, the five hours, the only way of me being disciplined and sticking to that pace. Because I always pace myself at my races. I'm pretty, pretty good at doing that with my watch. If I set out a race, I think, right, I want, I want to come in at this time. This is the pace I've got to do it. And I'll try and stick to that pace for the, for the, for the whole race. Obviously with hills, it's a bit difficult. But if it's a flat... But I didn't deliberately run with a pacer. It's not the sort of thing I'd normally do. But I thought that is the only way I'm not going to risk going off too fast. And that's the one time it worked. The other six marathons have not been quite as successful, especially the later ones. But uh, that's another story. So but, in uh, terms of the marathons, the more you've done, um, regardless of kind of results, the way they've gone, have you, have you built a bank of experience where you approach each marathon in a, in a different way? I think... Since Brighton, my marathon story has been nothing short of a disaster. <laughs> and I think a lot of it was almost getting a little bit too, I won't say cocky, but a little bit too confident. And uh, I got four, four hours 50 bang on pretty much at Brighton and the, the goal was sub five. So I, I was overjoyed with that. And I'd entered Milton Keynes three weeks after, which was really daft. I, I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll enter that. would be, be fine. That's a flat course. I can, I can try and go for a, a sub 4.45 or something. Yeah, I, I, I'm experienced now. But um, I got really unwell sort of this time last year. And it was, it was just a, a case of um, horrible man flu that didn't seem to go away. It was really weird. And I had it for a good sort of month and a half. And uh, it affected me. I'm, I'm never usually ill like that. But, but um, my breathing, I had problems with my breathing and everything, it, was, it wasn't anything serious, but it was serious enough to affect running. You know, it would make running harder than, than it should have been. And uh, the night before Milton Keynes, I was pretty much up all night coughing. And uh, I still went ahead and did the race. You can see on my video, all, all, all these um, races I'm talking about are on my channel. And uh, you can see the bad as well as the good. And this was definitely a bad a bad experience and um you can see on the intro when i'm doing my little intro at the start and i sound really husky and uh and horrible but again i i, I tried to go with the 445 pacer 
but he went off like a rocket. I don't know if it was just me, but he seemed to be going too fast. So I, I, I ignored him and sort of just did my own race. I hit halfway at 221, and which is good. And uh, but I thought I felt totally different than at Brighton. I didn't feel I had another half in me. I, I, I was thinking this is I should not feel this bad. I could hardly. So some girl was trying to speak to me, you know, just like chitter chatter that you do on a race sometimes. I couldn't even manage a yes or a no. My throat was just, it was hideous. And then I got to 17 miles and it was game over. I just uh, I had to slow down and stop and, and walk. And I pretty much walked it in. But the, the story, rather than waffling on now, the story's on my YouTube channel. You can see it, it, it's a real raw video. It's, you know, I don't hold, hold back with the editing. You know, I, the, the bit where I'm fe really feeling sad, I, I, I sort of document that. and. Um, it was my worst race, but my best race at the same time. I still finished it, still got it under five hours 30. And uh, I, I met, I linked up with uh, one of my brother's friends and we sort of walked in together. It was just a real sort of team bonding with someone. You, you know yourself with, with, with running sometimes, you know, you go through the same sort of hell, but you sort of get through it together and we finished together and everything. So it, it was a good story in the end, but it certainly knocked me back into place with you know, the marathon will find a weakness. And I think half, you can just about wing a half, but a full, it, it finds you. You know, if, if you're under-trained, if you, you, you've done something wrong, it will just, it will just find it and, uh, and tear you to pieces. So yeah, that was Milton Keynes. And then what was after Milton Keynes? Um, Oh, there was one after that, and I can't remember what it was. I've, I've gone blank. I did beat your head again. That was that went wrong. Um, Chester, yeah, how could I forget Chester? I'm wearing the top now because that, that was a good thing to come out of Chester. The, the top was one of the best tops I've ever had from a race, and I uh, really, really like it. But yeah, again, that was um, me trying to be a bit, a bit too clever and uh, go for it when I shouldn't have. And the weather didn't help then. It was in October, and it was a bit windy and a bit. The, the weather kept changing and that's really hard because sometimes you you know you sort of adapt to the weather and then it changes and you get too hot then too cold then it's windy then it's it just like sometimes it just is not your day and Chester again I've documented that and uh, that was a real battle from 16 miles and <laughs> this guy at a pub in this little village was uh, giving away beer and I just took some off him I just necked half a pint I thought, what, what have I got to lose? The time's gone, so just uh, just net this this beer, and it felt great. <laughs> but again, if you want to watch that, just go on my channel, and you'll be able to see that for yourself. But the one thing I did learn about that, I managed to run the last five k. I say run; it was real ploddy pace. It was like sort of seven and a half minute kilometers. But at the t when you get to that point, just moving forward is difficult. And uh, I managed to run the last five k, and that felt like a a good achievement but yeah but my marathon story is just and I was all ready for Manchester this this year I thought I was quite well prepared for it and uh and that was taken taken away with this this coronavirus nonsense and uh like all the races and the park runs and and you know I'm not alone with all this everyone around the world is uh has lost out on their races but you've just got to adjust and uh, and change the goalposts which I've actually learned to uh, enjoy going out, running on my own now. And uh, I love it. I do more miles now than I've ever done before. And I think once you sort of appreciate what's around you and uh, realise that it doesn't have to be a race every time, you know, you can do a half marathon in an hour slower than you normally do and just still get the benefit of being out and and that sense of achievement that that doesn't go away and i'm i'm, I'm really in a way i'm i'm not glad all this has happened but the, the positive that i've taken out of it is i've learned to love running for what it is rather than just always having to race always having to you know beat a time i've, I've completely changed my outlook now and uh, i've been out this morning i mean i felt like i didn't feel like going out this morning but I thought, I'm not going to do my weekly half, but I'll, I'll just do it like an eight and a half miler. And it felt great, you know, just to go out and just uh, be amongst it, really, and uh, still have that feeling I've done something. I feel, I feel the same. With the, whilst this situation, obviously, is very sad and, and this, that and the other, it's given me, I think, a complete lift of any sort of pressure. The events are cancelled. So I can just go out and run when I want, if I want, some days I do, some days I don't. I can run just because I would like to go and find a landmark. 
um, and there's no pressure on me, which I don't know, it's, it's felt really sort of quite odd. I didn't think I would feel like this because I was so set on my race and my training and things were really focused. Then the moment it was cancelled, I just thought, cool, okay, I'll just go back to why I sort of started, which was just to enjoy running. And I think sometimes the races can get the better of you, especially if the training's not going so well and you just feel like it's a countdown yeah. to the day. Uh, whereas right now I'm very set on the idea that I won't be doing anything until 2021. Um, and so even if my ultra race does come off, brilliant. But I'm not going to do too much more towards it other than just enjoy running because at the end of the day, I don't want to completely overload myself with this idea that I should definitely be going out every day and sticking to a plan where I just don't know what's going to be happening. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You, can, you just sort of make your own make your own sort of rules as such. And uh, again, I've been driven by discipline and sort of goals. I've just done my goals differently. Like ever since the lockdown was announced, I thought I'm still going to do a 5K on a Saturday morning, regardless of where it is. I'm not going to run the park run courses at nine o'clock or anything. I'll do it a different time earlier and just do my own part run and uh i don't have to race it you know one day i can try and race it one saturday i can just do it for a recovery run or, or whatever and that's working really well i've just called it the diy part run and uh, did event eight yesterday and uh yeah because uh, i still feel like i'm i've got a part of part run in me as such although it's miles away from what it really is it, it's just something to cling on to and to look back on you know to, who'd have thought we'd, we'd be doing this and um, I try and do a half marathon every Sunday as a long run. Again, do it easy pace, maybe do some change of pace halfway through or something just to sort of vary it. But again, just to have that discipline, number the events, DIY half marathon, it, it's, it keeps you motivated and it's not a race, but you've still got a reason to do it. But I did my first virtual race on Friday. which Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, again, forced into the situation. It was a run-through event that was meant to be taking place Thursday evening, uh, it's Chase, yeah, Chase the Sun. I love those. I love run through events, and I always sort of tend to where I can. And I'd entered this months ago, and we had the email saying, obviously, it's been cancelled, but can you do it as a virtual? So, yeah, I did my virtual 10K on Friday morning before it got hot. And that was the first time I'd really had a go at sort of racing on my own. And I thought, this is a real test to see what I can do. And, you know, being on my own totally and driven by well driven by a watch so i went out and i thought right my pb for a 10k is just under 53 minutes so for, if i can get a sub 55 10k on my own then i'll i'll be really really happy with that so i, I went out and uh thought yeah i actually feel all right and there's i did an out and back along a canal and i could have come straight back but there's a really boring road that you can you can alter the route and go down that. I thought, right, let's let's test the mental strength here. So I went down that that long, horrible, boring road. There's a sewage works on it as well, just to give it that extra bit of uh, horribleness. And uh, yeah, I came in just under 54 minutes, which that to me felt like a PB because being on my own and just driven by nothing, I thought I'm I'm actually getting used to this. This is you know this is all right. And hopefully when the races do come back, I'll be able to look at them in a different way and sort of use this as, as base training. Just the diet. I'm, I'm, my diet's awful at the moment. <laughs> I'm just eating, <laughs> eating crap and boozing too much. But I think a lot of people are. It's not to get through it. It's just, it's just there. And uh, I need the discipline of I'm working from home at the moment. I need discipline of going to the office. You know, I won't drink in the week at all when I'm in my routine. But it's just too easy to slip out of it. and. Uh, I think if I wasn't running, I'd be uh, back to where I started. But I, I'm not where I want to be. But we can sort that out when when it's all back to normal-ish. But yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's a weird one. But yeah, the running on running alone is uh, it's not as bad as I thought. I, I never really did it. I never gave it a chance, and uh, that's the one good thing to come out of it. But yeah, so um, I, I was going to speak to you about the um, the Palace Half. Yes. Uh, that was my last race, the Palace Half was. That was literally be the week before everything stopped. And I watched your videos, I binge watched them. Because what I liked about that video was uh, the fact that you were at Bushy Park. And I didn't realise that Bushy Park was so close to where that was. Because I don't know London very well at all. And uh, I thought, well, I could mix the two. I could go and do Bushy Park run on the Saturday 
stay over and then do the the half on the Sunday. And that Bushy Park actually turned out to be my hundredth park run. Which, wow! Yeah, what a place to that's the best place to do it. Where it all started. Technically, it was yeah, but I didn't want to do it there. I'd, I'd planned it for my local park run, Perry Hall, just down the road. And I planned it for months there, and every time because that's that's where the running club are, and that's where I, I know a lot of people. It's only a small park run, but it's a great atmosphere, and I really feel attached to that place. And I wanted the hundredth to be there. Every time we arranged it, something would go wrong. Like there was ice, there was um, the storm. Dennis ruined it, but the whole story is on my YouTube rather than sort of going on about it now. But to cut a long story short, I was due to do my hundredth the week after that I did Bushy, and I thought there's no way that part one is going to go ahead. I think it was the 14th of March. So it's when all the speculation about what was going on was happening. I thought, right, you're at Bushy. You're on your own. Just get your things scanned and have that as your 100th. And yeah, it was really special. And then obviously the, the Hampton Court half the next day. And I watched your video. And as I say, going back to uh, what you did, I remember you parking up at Bushy and, and having a talk about that. And I thought, is he parked his car there? And is he walking to the race? I was trying to work out. And then I looked on Google Maps and saw it was quite close. And that, that your video sort of motivated me to do that, to you know, get overnight accommodation and sort of make a weekend of it. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that video. But <laughs> that, um, that course, <laughs> the, uh, the Palace Half, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a course that took me by surprise. I mean, I've been to Bushy Park loads over my lifetime. I don't live that close to it, but um, I'd always wanted to just run up another river there. That's all I wanted to do. And I booked that first Palace Half. I remember we'd had snow must have been a week before and it wasn't even necessarily going to go ahead and I remember turning up and you'll see for the videos it was freezing it was so yeah. cold on that day um a completely different picture to this year this year um you know the weather is the complete opposite but again you know that that course it's um it I remember thinking that when you come back back round oh good I'm just going to enter the palace now but you run back yeah. down the river again <laughs> then back out and then back in and uh, yeah, that, that day was, of course, no, no, thinking back, it was a week after I'd done my first half. I really enjoyed it, but I was, I was hanging on in there. It, was, it wasn't easy. And it's very kind of residential, isn't it? There's that bit where you yeah. go out through Kingston and <laughs> you're going past residential streets with a lot of people, um, a lot of traffic uh, tooting, trying to get over the road. So if you want to yeah. try and do a PB there, you've got to bear in mind that you might be stood on the pavement waiting for traffic to go past. It's got a lot of potential. I know that two different race organisers do two different races there. Peculiar. I don't know why they do that. But, um, yeah, it was certainly one that I thought about doing again. I was going to do it this year. But knowing what the weather was like last year, I just thought I don't really want to risk having to try and trek there in the snow. Uh, and then by the time I realised that actually the weather was looking up this year, I, uh, it was too late. It was already sold out. But it was something that I planned to do again because that's where I set my – my PB from my half marathon is actually um, both those weekends back to back. I have identical times for them. I remember. I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was so, uh, I watched it back probably about three or four months ago. I watched it a bit at the end. It's just, you know, give me a second. But no, I was, it was dead on, dead on the exact same time. <laughs> I mean, pa Palace Half is. I'd always wanted to do that one because I'd seen a number of I've seen a number of videos about it, and I thought I knew it was flat, and I thought this is because I did sub two for the first time in uh, July last year, and uh, I, I don't know how I did it, but it was one fifty seven, and it was four laps around Aintree Racecourse, and that was another run through event, and uh, again, that's on my YouTube channel if you want to go and check that out, but I never got anywhere near that I only did it once I only broke two hours once and uh, I thought Palace Half was a realistic chance to have a go at it again because of being flat and I thought yeah yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do it here and um, I thought I can be run it relatively fit for that race and I'm trying to explain this one yeah in, in January I was injured and I'd entered the Gloucester Half Marathon and um, do you know the FOD runner, Andy? Forrest yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was one of his local ones. And uh, I've managed to bump into him there and we had a chat. And uh, yeah, it was, it was good to see him there. And uh, yeah, I, I nearly dropped out of that because I'd had some issues with my leg. And 
I just went into it the really laid back attitude and just to, just to finish and I ended up getting 159.49 it was crazy and I thought well I've done it again so the pressure was off me a little bit and it's a good job because Palace Half was just it destroyed me it shouldn't have but it did and you'd probably be glad you didn't do it because our friend the wind was back it was from I think it had diverted from Brighton but it was hideously windy that day it was just oh it was it was horrible and there was a real surreal atmosphere because all of the, the the virus stuff was really you know it was all sh- should it go ahead or a lot of races were cancelled they were getting a lot of a lot of uh, sort of verbal off people for it going ahead it, it was an impossible situation for them to be in because the government couldn't force them to close it so all the money would be lost it was it was a really horrible situation but they, they cope with it really well to be fair but it was just a, a surreal race it was just just horrible and the first like you say the first the first bit along the river it was great then you come off and go for the shopping center that random bit there yeah. but then the wind coming along that river stretch was just hideous i mean i think i did the first 5k in 27 minutes so i was like well on track for a, a sub two but then the wind was just it was just brutal on that sort of coming back up the river and then you say you come on the roads you have to pavements and all that i was like what the bloody hell is this about mm. I, was like, I had to run on the road to try and like overtake people and then like i say marshall stopping people and it just i was like this can't be for long surely but it was it was for about three miles and i was like this is not this is not what i'd visualized and then i got back to where you, you go along the path again i think that's seven miles or something and my pace was just dropping and dropping dropping and dropping i was being sub two is not happening now <laughs> the bit that got me the worst was you, you do that stretch along the river again and I'd seen on your video I remember you saying there was a bit of cross country at the end yeah, but I yeah. thought that was just the last hundred meters or so <laughs> but no I was like hanging feeling sorry for myself wanting to go home and then turn into that bit where it goes off road and that last two miles just <laughs> it wasn't even that bad but it was just I didn't expect it and then I was a broken man at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I found that bit tough. That was, I was hanging, I was, you'll see in the video, I was hanging on to a guy's yeah. on my shoulder and I thought, cool, I'll just see this bit in. And then, the, yeah, you enter the cross country part, it was getting cut up already. I can't imagine how bad it would have got. I remember going on Facebook afterwards and people were really moaning about it because it was becoming really dangerous, especially yeah. for the people who were coming in, I don't know, two hour 30 uh, and post that time. They just said they couldn't even pass it. They happened to walk, slipping and sliding everywhere. And I was not ready for that at all. That no. really, that, that got me uh, because I was, I was doing okay and uh, I was having a good time. And then I came into that bit and I thought, oh, great. I can kind of see the palace, no problem. But it seemed to go on. And, on, and then it kind of takes you around. I thought, there's a the palace. It takes you around to the right. And then sure enough, I'm kind of going over this way. I'm thinking, oh, when's this thing going to end? It was, it was horrid. It wasn't even that bad, but it was. It was, I can't explain it. And that, oh, the wind as well, just, <laughs> I mean, I said on the video, I was honest about not liking the course and uh, run through. I, I, they are really uh, good race organisers. and I, I do most of their stuff where I can that's in this area. But I don't, I don't know any other way around it because it's where it is rather than what it is. But the, the, the start and the finish, beautiful in the grounds, isn't it? <laughs> it's just... Yeah. <laughs> the, um, I, I've got uh, one of my favourite running shirts is from there. Uh, yeah, really the good, really good one. Mm. And the medal's awesome. Um, I can't yeah. fault that side of things. And you know, we did no. the warm up, and the setup's pretty, pretty good, pretty easy to to manage. And there is ample parking, but uh, the course is just a bit weird. And I'm, I'm still unsure whether the because I did run through as well. Whether the other company, I think it's Quicksilver Running, I don't know whether their course is different or not. Um, because I've only ever done it with run through. I've seen a few videos on that, and uh, I think they just pretty much run it in reverse. It's still much of the same. I don't, yeah, I, I, it's probably much of the same, but a little bit different. I think they, uh, there's very slight alterations, but yeah, it's uh, the thing is, if I live nearer, I'd probably do it, but it's a lot of money for me to sort of travel mm. down to London, have to get accommodation, and mm. I really did enjoy that weekend, but it was surreal as well knowing this is the last race for the foreseeable future yeah i think it got him ahead a bit as well and get and the negative demons sort of <laughs> ruined it but yeah it was one of them 
But I wonder what the next race will be. I know. I, I don't. I don't know what it will be. I, I can't see it being anything massive. If there's going to be anything, it'd be quite small. But who who wants to, to take on you know the, the race and say, "Yep, yeah, we're going to green light it," and then run the risk of people pulling out? And then if it's a smaller company, it's going to be difficult for them to to justify putting it on. If I, I don't know, but actually it got me thinking because uh, I reminded myself earlier that you'd done the, the Ragnar relay. Yes. And I wondered, I did wonder whether races like that are more likely to exist being that you obviously you do it within a team, but it isn't that necessarily that mass field of people because you're running at different paces at different times. And I wonder whether those sorts of events might be more logical to put on. Yeah, I, I, I don't, you know what? I never even thought about that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, but I, I don't know what what they're if they've cancelled the, the this one for for September this year. I think they have. But if you're, uh, I suppose by then, you know, the getting together in smaller groups might be might be a thing. So yeah, if you're with your team, you, you're only with your team members really. And um, from my experience of doing it, I don't think I saw more than five people on the course at any time it was yeah, it was totally more or less isolated like you say it's all staggered so much and there's in terms of numbers there's not so many people doing it but yeah things like that they've probably got a chance but it's just whether they class the being with it with your group in that van for for the weekend as as uh, not socially distancing but by then that might be an issue not be an issue it's just so hard to sort of plan or think about anything because we don't know what the future holds. But yeah, Ragnar was definitely a, a unique experience. It's something I never thought I'd be able to do. Not so much the running of it because that, that wasn't too difficult. Just the being awake for that long and being in a small s- sort of space with people that you don't know that well, you know, that's totally not me. But it, it, it worked out really good in the end. And uh, again, there's a, a video on that. Yeah, journey. no, I I, um, I reminded myself of it uh, today only because I suddenly came off the news and it was about White Cliffs and I thought, oh yeah, White Cliffs. I remember um, the, the the running event you kind of associated with that and I, I watched it back and uh, it, yeah, it looks a lot of fun. But similar to what you said, it really is not me either to spend time with people mm-hmm. I, I don't know that well um, in in a small space. But then equally, you know, you're putting yourself out there, you're doing something a bit different and you know, an experience comes of it that you wouldn't necessarily find if you had decided to maybe stick to something that was more comfortable. Definitely. And I think it was a real character building exercise for me. I really didn't think I'd, I'd sort of deal with it well. And, uh, but, but I did, I was really sort of pleased with how, uh, how that went. It's not something I'd do again, but more, more the sort of logistics and the financial side of things. Cause again, it wasn't cheap to do that uh, with, with the traveling, the entry fees, the accommodation and everything that goes with it. But yeah, it was it was certainly a, a character building exercise, and uh, but he, I remember being half asleep with Chris from uh, Here We Are Running in the in the back of that van. It's just crazy, you know, because Chris is someone you had him on yesterday, didn't you? Or, or your video that was a, a good interview, and you know, someone that I'd watched on on YouTube, and then it, here I am in this van, sort of half asleep with him in the back. It was just so bizarre, but but good. It all worked out really well in the end, and it was organised well, and. Uh, Definitely an experience that uh, I'll remember for a long time. Not your traditional yes. race. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Something a bit different. And uh, I like to do things a bit different. That's why it's kind of uh, given me a little bit more space now to think about the sorts of runs I want to do, the sorts of environments I want to run in. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good with running on my own. I used to run uh, with music. That's how I got through all my running, probably for the first year of my running I only ever ran listened to music um, and I think part of that may have supported me running probably too fast which whilst as a negative it also served me quite well with trying to get some fast times uh, I don't run with music anymore strangely um, I just prefer to kind of see the open spaces but I was going to sort of ask you about that with the running do you do you listen to music is that do you think that would help or does help do you know what I mean I, I love my dance music and uh but when I'm running, I like to sort of take it all in and uh, sort of be at one with the environment, whether that be a race and hearing sort of people cheer you or just the general sort of atmosphere or being in nature and just hearing hearing that. So I don't listen to music when I'm running at all. 
I think I did. I've done it once, and that was um, when Storm Dennis was was here. And guess what? A race got cancelled. And I did a, my first ten miler alone. That that was the sort, sort of start of my running alone journey. And I thought, if I'm going to be on my own in this terrible weather and running slowly, I'm going to have music. So it did help then. But race is definite no for me. I mean, everyone does it differently, but I, I just like being hearing what's going on. And um, yeah, that's that's my, my my take on it. But a lot of people like to zone out, and and the music does help. And like, imagine if you've got some high energy you know, good BPMs going on, it, it could help you go that little bit faster. But racing for me is just being around it all and, and taking it all in. And again, when, when, when you vlog in a race with the GoPro and everything, there's a lot to sort of think about sorting that out. And if I've got headphones in the way and having to have my phone on me, I just can't be doing with it. I mean, it, it's quite difficult multitasking with the GoPro sometimes, but if you don't do that, you don't have the memory as such. So I think, right, just have that in your... I'm going to have to change the way I do things with the filming because I've, I've just invested in, in a new GoPro. I've just got a GoPro 8, Hero 8, and uh, I'm waiting for that to arrive. So I'm looking forward to uh, doing some hopefully improved uh, footage with that. But again, I, I don't even have a selfie stick or anything. I literally just hold the camera <laughs> because it, I can just get it out of my pocket really easily and just sort of shoot the bits that I want. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm thinking there's, there's got to be a better way of doing this. And, uh, I watch people like Chris and all that, and they've got all the devices, and they're just so confident at doing it and and racing as well. And I, like, how the hell do you do that? I just get it out of my pocket and just point and <laughs> hope for the best. But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see some uh, st more stabilisation improvements in the uh, in the future video because the stabilisation on that Hero Eight looks really good, even when yeah. you're sort of shaking and you're running. But I mean, I've used the Hero Four, the GoPro Hero Four, for ages. And uh, for what I do, I mean, YouTube, like, just like yourself, I've heard the reason you set your channel up. And I didn't set it up for any reason. It's just something to look back on and something to motivate myself and, you know, look look back at the good times, the bad times and how you can improve. And it's just memories, isn't it? You know, when you, you've got something there, you've set something there. And if I, I, I never set out with the intention of getting X amount of subscribers, I just thought, right, just, just put it out there. And uh, if people enjoy it and... Usually with the races, you know, the first thing I did when I wanted to do a marathon was type in where I wanted to do it. And then you see the videos and you, you watch them and it links to other people. And it's really useful to know what you're sort of letting yourself in for. Because we, we beat your head. I, I found that by accident. I had no desire to do a trail marathon. I had no desire to do a hilly marathon. It was just, I saw someone, this uh, guy called John, I just saw his video to turn up and he doesn't do any music or anything he's, he's this um old older guy and he's 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 fit and uh he literally just commentates and it, it's still well it's well edited and the, the footage is quite good but there's no like fancy bits or anything he just does the whole race pretty much but i was i just found myself watching the whole video i was like this this is awesome i really want to do this and um going back to when i was a kid when i was like running fairly seriously I always wanted to do a marathon. That was my ultimate, ultimate goal. But you had to be 18 at the time. And I was about 11. I thought, there's no way I can wing that. And that was a goal that never sort of happened because like, going back to that in my teens, everything changed. And running was the last thing I was doing when I was 18. So to come back sort of 30 odd years on and tick that box was uh, definitely something that was uh, something I'm proud of, really. And beat your head, I just chose that because I'd seen that guy's videos. I knew there was other marathons out there, but I just liked the whole, and there was a nine hour cutoff point as well. And I thought, yeah, we can do a marathon in nine hours, I think, if, uh, even if something goes horribly wrong. And uh, yeah, that's, that, that was how I uh, chose Beachy Head. And I was saying, you, you're crazy doing that. Have you seen the elevation? And I was like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. In fact, it made it easier because I think if it's flat, you put yourself under pressure for time because you expect to be able to maintain a certain pace. But if you've got like one mile hills, you're going to be walking them. So you, you don't think of time. And it's, I actually felt fresh when I finished the first marathon because I'd, I'd walked quite a lot of it. And uh, my, when I finished it, my wife says, you know, you don't actually look that tired. I said, well, I'm not, not too bad. But when you're putting the effort in on the marathons, it's a different story. <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, well, yeah. that's why with my uh, with my ultra marathon, I the reason why I signed up for it is because I just thought it's going to give me a good good chance, gives me permission to to run a bit, walk a bit, jog a bit. I, I know I haven't got 40 miles in my legs to run, absolutely not, nowhere close to it because I never run more than a marathon. Um, but I just thought it'd be a bit of fun, uh, nice environment, I can just be chilled with it because there's no there's no uh, current, say, PB for me. There's nothing like that. There's a cutoff yeah. of like nine, 10 hours. It doesn't matter what time I do it in, just want to do it. And I thought maybe like seven and a half hours, eight hours would be cool because then I can just enjoy it rather than feeling like, oh, you know, I've got to try and get this done. I mean, it's behind me actually on the wall. The guy who uh, won it last, uh, 2019, he won the 40 mile race in four hours 30. Well, that's... <laughs> that's not far off my quickest marathon so i can scrap that straight away i'm nowhere close to that <laughs> yeah. um but i just signed up because i thought yeah, let's try something new but there was no video on it really either so for me what i wanted to do is document it so this kind of more local um running company who set it up and they put on some great events i try and record all the local stuff now so that people who are coming from further afield can appreciate what the, there is on offer and uh yeah they, they do some great events but it's not something that's necessarily you know, nationally known, but they're good fun. And most of them are just along the river. So, you know, for me going forward, I, I, same with you, I just hold it in my hand. And only in the yeah. last two weeks have I recorded anything. I've had this since the camera arrived. Haven't used it until recently because I just throw it out of my pocket. I've got nowhere to put it. And you mentioned Chris. Yeah. Chris, Chris is like, he's ready to go. He's got everything. He, yeah. I know. I'm having, having, so well. <laughs> having run with him, we're running downhill. I remember it, a race, a really <laughs> tough race. It was a really hot evening. It was, it was really difficult. And uh, yeah, he's just there, whips it out, records it downhill, puts it away. And then I watched it edited. And sure enough, there I am running past him. And it's just, it was phenomenal to watch. But for me, I'm, I'm just pretty basic with it. Grab the GoPro. Hopefully I haven't left it on so the battery dies. Hopefully I can get the thing to turn on properly. And I just... You know, I record what I record and I put it up there raw, highs and lows. And uh, that again, that's what I see in your channel. It's really good for people to to see somebody running at different paces. I don't really want to see the person running with a GoPro finish your marathon in two hours, 10. It's fun to watch. I mean, it's all right to watch it, but yeah, it doesn't yeah. really make me feel like I'm going to get the same experience because I'm nowhere near the front. I'm with, I, It's busier where I am. Uh, I'm around people who are struggling people who need that support i'm not up with the elites so i watch the video i appreciate it but i don't see the same value in it as just watching kind of the everyday guy working through the process giving it a good go has a good day has a bad day struggles with the with the wind struggles in the heat and then you know that that's a channel that i find a lot more value in yeah definitely it's it, it's real and you can sort of relate to it and you, you do you think if, if that person can do it like when I was trying to break two hours for the uh, the half, it was it was like an obsession. It was like I've got to do this goal, and I know it's going to push me to you know the extreme level. But finding like similar ability people and seeing them do it, you know it, that's that's what sort of inspires you to, uh, to 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 have a go yourself. And uh, yeah, I do watch the sort of super fast people, but like like you say, it, it's being able to relate. That's for me. That's the most important thing, and that inspires me to do do what I do and uh, I really enjoy doing the documentaries and uh, if people want to watch it then then great it's uh, it's, it's all good and uh, I've had a few people come up to me at races and say oh, I've done, I've entered this because I saw your video and uh, you think oh that's that's really nice if someone someone sort of got something out of it and uh, yeah that's all I do it for is, is for me and if no one ever commented or liked again I, I wouldn't care you know it's literally mm -hmm. just for me and that's uh, that's that's the main thing with the videos but it does keep you focused doesn't it yeah it, it, yeah and me i set my channel up i didn't really know what a subscriber was i didn't really care the videos are there for me to look back on the future for my family so in 10 years time i can just go well, how did i do with that first marathon again i can just post the video back up there and i can have a look yeah. at it and watch it the fact that people comment the fact that people watch is amazing if people are inspired that's really great as well but um i think probably because of that i don't I don't have the time to invest in all the editing. So you do get the, the videos shot the best I can do them, but I don't always you yeah. know, stop, chuck the camera on the floor, run over it, run back over it, put it in a tree. I, that's not <laughs> okay. me. Yeah, that's, just, that's not me. That's not the way I do my videos. But 
kind of at the same time I'm I, I'm also just putting things up there the way I do it uh, and and that's kind of what you get on my channel but I've learned a lot and I'm really pleased that I continue to document the journey because that's what I do it for and it's for me to look back on and uh, and over time the kind of people that comment on my videos the people that return to my videos are then the same people that I subscribe to and so I'm, I'm getting to experience this kind of full circle uh, I'm yeah the, the people I'm sharing my journey with are similar to me which I think is really special and would never ever have come about uh, this community I didn't even know existed until I started to record videos yeah it's fa fantastic isn't it it's just another sort of way of keeping motivated and connected with it all and uh, yeah we'll, we'll see what the uh, the new camera brings but I don't expect anything too professional <laughs> but also, I, try, I try and edit as good as I can because I have got a creative mind because of like making music and stuff I don't do that as much as I used to but I can apply that to the editing with the, with the restricted stuff I've got and sort of put a bit of music behind it and uh, <laughs> I'm guilty of doing the jumping over the GoPro now <laughs> there's not a lot else to do when you're on your own but yeah it's, uh, I, I do enjoy sort of creating things and uh, putting stuff together but yeah the, the raw videos they're, they're, uh, they're really good as well definitely definitely that's just uh, hope the uh, stabilization makes my videos look a little bit better just for people that watch them and because uh, otherwise we we'll get dizzy eyes or something so what we'll do uh, before we get chucked off here do you have, you know, if you could give maybe a little bit of advice to somebody who's just starting out. I know a few people that have just started to watch this channel who are just doing the Couch to 5K. They are starting yeah. with this process. Thanks to lockdown, they found running, which is awesome. Um, just one piece of advice you would give them uh, whilst they're kind of going through those early stages of running. Okay, well, from what I would say is do everything at your own pace. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Set your own goals and uh, take your time with everything. Don't expect to you know, get the goal straight away. And if you've entered like races and stuff, what I see is people enter marathons or halves or whatever, and they think they have to follow a, a training plan right to the T. And I think that's when a lot of people lose interest. If you're following something and you, you, you're ruled by it, I think you know that's where th th that can be a bit sort of counterproductive i think just do you do your own thing and find find what works for you don't get too sucked into all that you've got to do this you've got to do that you know you, you've just got to find your own way and and learn and make your own mistakes but just grad just do it gradually and don't expect results straight away and hopefully if they didn't catch the 5k that's a gradual introduction to the distance but then you know set your goals but make them realistic and you know, don't, don't try. Don't look at a piece of paper that tells you what you should be doing. You know, do, do it your way, and that's that's sort of. I mean, some people do respond well to that sort of thing, but for me, I, I've never followed a plan ever. I just sort of do do my own thing and sort of wing it a little bit. But they, they, they are useful, but don't be a slave to it. That's probably uh, the best advice I would give. That is, yeah, superb advice. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat with you today. Um, I'm going to put and your you links can. down below uh, so people can okay. uh, find you and connect with you online. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate uh, your time and uh, your wisdom and sharing your experience uh, with us today. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me on. It's been, um, I'm really enjoying the series and sort of finding out about different people. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great, especially with all this, this time we've got. You know, to have that one in the background and listen to, to is great, really. And uh, I look forward to more of them. Super. I'm glad you enjoyed them. And yeah, like you say, I've got a little bit of time in my hands, so I thought it might be nice just to get everyone's view on their running journey, what they're up to, and kind of how they've, they've muddled through to where they are now. So, uh, yeah, it's going really, really well. I'm enjoying it, and it's just, like I say, great to have a huge variety of people on uh, with different backgrounds and different uh, stories to tell. So thank you for being one of those people. I do really appreciate it.